Gambit, the Eye of the Eagle. As the Iron Curtain lowered in the 1950s to conceal Soviet military developments, we realized that eventually conventional aircraft reconnaissance over communist territories would become impractical for political as well as military reasons. We would be denied crucial technical intelligence data during a period when it was most needed. The urgency to develop alternate reconnaissance methods was underscored by the detonation of the first Soviet hydrogen bomb in August 1953, only nine months after America's first H-bomb test. After that, it became extremely important to monitor Soviet progress in nuclear-armed intercontinental range ballistic missile systems. With the development of our own long-range missiles in the mid-1950s, we would soon have the means to launch Earth-orbiting satellites, bringing photo reconnaissance from space much nearer to reality. Our developing space technology would eventually provide the nation with the required intelligence collection systems. As early as 1956, a development plan was established by the U.S. Air Force for what would be a family of satellite systems to collect intelligence including a high-resolution photo surveillance satellite. The Soviet launch of Sputnik 1 in October 1957 burst upon the world with an impact seldom achieved by any single event. We in the United States were quick to recognize the implications of Sputnik. This exhibition of Soviet rocket technology proved that they too possessed an intercontinental delivery system for thermonuclear weapons. For U.S. intelligence, the gathering of detailed data on this new and awesome threat became a task of the highest priority. During the 1950s, the high-flying U-2 spy plane, as the news media called it, provided much valuable intelligence data on an interim basis. However, as our need for information grew, so too did the lengths of these flights over the Soviet Union culminating in the disastrous flight of pilot Francis Gary Powers during the first attempt to make a one-way traverse of Soviet territory in 1960. After that incident, President Eisenhower ordered there be no more aircraft overflights of the Soviet Union. However, that well-publicized event gave added impetus to the development of photo-reconnaissance satellites. Under the cover of program WS-117L, the Air Force launched and operated Corona, a joint CIA-Air Force satellite program for wide area search. Corona depended on physical recovery of its film payload, which would not be achieved until August 1960. And there was Samos, designed to process its pictures in orbit and transmit them to Earth via radio. This approach provided rapid data return, but did not have the adequate resolution to augment the wide area search of Corona. What was required was a photographic satellite system with high acuity and resolution to provide positive identification and analysis of individual targets. The first launch of the advanced gambit took place on July 29, 1966, only four weeks later than the date originally established two and a half years earlier. And to assure continued and uninterrupted coverage of denied areas, the final missions of the original gambit system overlapped the early advanced gambit flights. Paralleling the advanced camera payload were improvements in film technology. For example, on the third advanced gambit flight in December 1966, a new film only 1.5 mil thick was used. Miss Judith Schwann, assistant director of Eastman Kodak Research Laboratories, describes the new thinner films. It's not very often that uh, we think about 
uh, trying to improve the amount of information that we store on a volume basis. But in this program, that was, uh, that was a very necessary thing to do. We started this program coating the silver halide emulsions on a film support that was two and a half mils thick. During the course of the program, we were able to uh, thin that down to one and a half mils and finally down to 1.2 mils. We were able to pack a lot more information in a given volume, and that meant uh, many more frames per mission. High-resolution gambit Im imagery has provided the magic catalyst that has helped to demonstrate to U.S. leadership the true nature of Soviet growing capabilities. First, let's talk about Soviet ICBM silo construction and hardness. Let me now turn to Soviet intermediate range system developments and focus on the SS-20 system. There are many facets and aspects of the SS-20 system that we are attempting to understand. This manufacturing facility is designed for the production of components of the SS-20 in a tactical mode. This building has an outer yard with many of the components or chassis of the SS-20, which with the gambit photography, we can clearly enlarge. Let me show you one of those buildings enlarged with equipment found nearby. This is SS-20 ground support equipment. These are transporter erector launchers, or TELs, that provide for the erection and firing of the missile when it's in the field. So with the satellite photography, we learned, we understood the basis for some of the Soviet equipment developments, and they provided the signatures for subsequent identification in the field. Let me turn to Soviet ground force developments. Let's discuss how Gambit high-resolution photography was used to detect and determine the status of a Soviet tank division which had been moved into Bulgan, Mongolia, a few years back. This is a good overview of the motor pool area where all the equipment is stored in the open. All the elements of the Soviet tank division displayed on this gambit imagery of high quality. Not only could we see the complete layout with the coverage provided by the system, but we could take each segment and very carefully make counts and types of weapons determinations. To provide the intelligence community with increased flexibility to attack certain problem targets, a second strip camera sharing the same optics with the standard 9-inch gambit camera was incorporated. As our secret sentry in space, gambit has provided the clear and constant vigilance our nation has required. The piercing gaze of gambit has demonstrated once again the preeminence of American space technology. But far more important, as the eye of the eagle Gambit is helping to guard us from those who would destroy our lives and liberties, contributing immeasurably to the preservation of peace.